An absolutely glorious weather day yet again in downtown Cincinnati. The finale of this homestand and the wrap-up to the three-game series interleague play between in-state rivals, the Cleveland Indians taking on the Cincinnati Reds. And hi again, everybody, alongside Chris Welsh. I'm Tom Brenneman. Welcome to Reds Baseball here on Fox Sports Ohio. And, well, last year this was a Cleveland team, Chris, that dominated the Reds during interleague play. And here we are this year in round one. Reds are 2-0. and Well, they are 2-0 and against the Indians, and they're doing better already, it seems like, in interleague play than the Reds did last year. But the Ohio Cup turnaround is what we're talking about. Last year, 1-5. and Right now, they're 2-0. and Going for a three-game sweep here this afternoon. And it's typical Reds. Last year, they had bad pitching. This year, the pitch has been great. They have outscored the Indians. Uh, they gave up a lot of runs last year. They haven't given up a one this year. So the tide has turned, so to say, here on the Ohio River. Hopefully, they'll be able to get out of here with one more win this afternoon. And that would mean a three-game sweep of the Cleveland Indians. Johnny Cueto started it the first night. Matt Latos and company took care of business here last night. And now it's Mike Leake's turn. First pitch coming up next. Fox Sports Ohio brought to you by the 2012 Ford F-150 Motor Trend Truck of the Year by Cincinnati USA. Let us be your travel guide to Cincinnati. Visit CincinnatiUSA.com. And by Skyline Chili. Game time is Skyline time. Stop by your favorite Skyline Chili today. Boy, it has just been glorious weather. What about through the remainder of this game? It's brought to you by Thompson Plumbing, Heating, Cooling, and Drain Cleaning. Here's John Gum. Well, like Tom Brenneman, I'm an east side guy, and on the east side, we know a good thing when we see it. This is a good thing today. Look at this weather forecast for the game. First pitch, 77, sunshine, 80 by the seventh inning, 83 by the final. That is the Reds. Go for the sweep. I'm going to give Jim Day a run for his money. Enjoy the game right here on Fox Sports Ohio. Obviously, John, a big Reds fan. He knows what Jim Day is doing after the game, and hopefully he's doing just that on Reds Live. 
Indians lineup today under Manny Acta, provided by Acta Advisors. Chew and right, Cabrera at short, Kipnis at second. Santana gets a start at first base with Bradley in center and Lopez his first start at third. Cunningham, Marson, and Tomlin the latter third against Reds right-hander Mike Leak or Jose Cuervo pitching numbers on number 44 wearing red today. Uh, two and five for Mike Leak, but those are his last two decisions. He got one his second last time out and uh, not bad the last couple times for Mike Leak. Each game seven innings and the last one against the Pirates seven innings of no or no walk baseball four runs overall. So Mike Leak on a day like today keep the ball down keep it in the ballpark change speeds and work quick. Well, ball one to get us underway, and the next pitch is driven in a deep right center field, and it will leave the ballpark. Now, that is not what you call keeping the ball down. Ken Su Chu, when he first broke in, was more of a middle of the lineup guy, hit more home runs, and when he gets in the leadoff spot, he's more of an on-base percentage guy. But if you throw a little pitch up out over the plate like that in this ballpark, chances are you'll get a brand new baseball from the home plate umpire. And that's what Mike Lee gets from Dana Demuth, who calls the balls and strikes today. And now it'll be Osdrubal Cabrera, the shortstop. He looks at ball one. It's another thing any pitcher, but especially Mike Lee. You fall behind early in the count, it could be a very long day. Or a short day, depending on how you look at it. 2 0. Well, it's one thing falling behind in the count, it's another thing giving into the hitter and throwing the ball up. I mean, he has to essentially pound the strike zone down, down, down all day long, much in the way that Derek Lowe did last night. That one hooked into the right field corner, and this will be a double after the Chew home run off the bat of Osdrubal Cabrera. Now what the Indians are doing here and what teams who have been successful against Mike Leake have done this year has been aggressive early in the count. And you see for the second consecutive batter he throws that pitch just about in the same spot. The only difference is Cabrera got out ahead of that pitch a little bit instead of knocking it out of the ballpark just kind of hooked it down the line. Trying to regroup and get the ball down. Reds fell behind 1 nothing. you may remember, in a series opener and then scored seven unanswered in what turned into a late route. So now Kipnis, and that's right through the wickets of Leak, who's generally as sure-handed as they come, and he fielded that ball cleanly. And it's got to be right on you when you're that close to the batter. But he would have easily cut down as Drupal Cabrera. Instead, Cabrera at third, and there's one out in the inning. Hey, remember now, Mike Leak, one of more than a handful of Reds that have been hit by the stomach flu during this week. In fact, he was so much under the weather, they pushed this start back a day. That one rolled over foul. Zach Cozart's been suffering through the same thing. He's finally back in the lineup for the first time in this series today at short. Santana behind the plate in each of the first two games. They move him out of there and down to first base today. 0 1 delivery. On the ground to Phillips. And he'll look at home. No play there. And the Indians lead 2 0. Take a look at the Reds defensively presented by your four dealers. Same outfield we've seen this entire series. The only change along the infield we mentioned is Kozak. And Devin Mezzarocco makes his first start of the series behind the plate. So now Michael Brantley. If he has a hit at today's game, he will have the longest hitting streak that has occurred in Major League Baseball in his 2012 season. Brantley, along with three others, have notched 20 games hit streaks. Three and oh.
A 20 game hitting streak by Brantley, the longest by a Cleveland Indian since Casey Blake hit in 26 straight games back at the end of May, early June in the 2007 year. 3 1 offering on the ground to Phillips. And this will end a productive opening frame for the Indians. They score twice. Reds are coming to bat. Trainer Stevie Bauman. Lee gives up a home run to start the game, a double and a second run. So the Reds line up presented by Axe Advisors, trailing 2 0. Heisey, Cozart, Botto, Phillips, Bruce, and Frazier, Ludwig, Mesoraco, and Lee. Against young right hander, had an outstanding 2011 season, 3 and 3 in ERA, almost 5 this year, and our Jose Cuervo stats on Josh Tomlin. Well, Josh Tomlin, as you watch this young right hander pitch, you're going to see the a lot of similarities between him and Mike Leake. Not overpowering, moves the ball in and out, has a good overhand curveball. There it is there. And changes speeds. I mean, for both these guys at the back end of the rotation, you're looking at pitchers where location is really at the utmost importance to them. Tomlin, a 12 game winner a season ago in just 26 starts. And the wins matched Justin Masterson for a team best. And you got to remember Tomlin did not pitch a game after August the 24th due to some inflammation in his right pitching elbow. He's already been on the disabled list once this season. They call it an intersection syndrome a condition that causes inflammation of a tendon in the right wrist. And that one is lined in the right field a base hit by Heisen. Seen a lot more of that hitting the ball the other way by Chris Heisey. Yeah, when he was in his slump, he couldn't get a base hit or even a ball to the right side of second base. He was pulling everything. He was lunging at the ball. His head was moving out towards the pitcher. The simple adjustment that he's made is just simply staying behind the baseball. It's worked out great. A little inside out job right there. Lead it off of the base knock. That's the way you do it when you need to answer a couple of runs that they got in the top. So now Cozart at 248, seven home runs, 15 runs batted in. Ball one away. Tomlin in his career has only walked 51 batters. Chris alluded to his control, and that's in over 290 innings. So he's not even averaging two walks per nine. So maybe we'll see that same strategy, Chris, with the Reds batters. And we saw that swinging early in the count. Well, that's what teams who have done well against actually both of these pitchers. That's why it's kind of ironic that you get two guys out there when they go bad is that they throw too many strikes rather than not enough strikes. Well, those are back in the lineup. A base hit his first time up, and now there's two on with nobody out. 
to the Reds' main man, Joey Votto. 362 batter. 11 home runs and 41 runs batted in. Votto leads the National League, batting with runners in scoring position. He leads the league in doubles, in walks, in intentional walks, in extra base hits, in on-base percentage, in slugging percentage. Second in batting. Leads the league in hitting against right-handed pitching. Well, that's a mouthful about one player. And he is as hot right now as he has ever been. That gives you an idea right there when you see the numbers in scoring position. And let's face it, by and large, the two guys batting in front of Votto this year, no matter who it's been, has not been on base very much. He has 41 RBIs and 32 of the 41 are with runners in scoring position. So he's not up there hitting home runs you know, with nobody on base. It's going to happen every now and again. When you put guys on base, and this is the main man in the entire league. Center field. Yeah. Drifting is Brandley. Goodbye. And the beat goes on for Joey Votto. The guy is simply unbelievable. It didn't last long. He works the count to get a fastball. He gets one out over the plate, down at the lower end of the strike zone. Goes down and gets it. Three runs for the Reds. You know, really the only way to pitch a Joey Votto when he's this hot and he is just simply on fire right now is to get the guys out ahead of him and pitch around him. Because if you have to throw him a strike with runners on base, chances are you're going to see a line drive somewhere. Maybe it'll leave the ballpark. Maybe it'll stay in and just bang off the wall. But chances are he's going to hit it hard. Now you said it right before he walked up there. I mean, he's always at least warm. He's not red hot right now. He's over the top there. And it's a white hot. I mean, he's hitting 525 over his last 17 games, not including today. What he's 17 already. games. This one will stay in the ballpark. Wow. Well, the Indians defensively presented by your four dealers. Cunningham, his first start in the series, out in left. Lopez, his first start at third, and for Santana, his first at first. And the first out of the series for Lou Marson behind the plate. When's the last time you saw a guy hit over 500 for nearly three weeks? And you're playing every day now. Let's just take what he's done, you know, over his last 61 games. He's had 75 hits and 50 walks. In his last 61 games, the only, the only the most recent player to do that, going back, say, all the way to 1988, is Todd Helton in 2004 when he got off there. Such a great run of it right there. But, I mean, that's one guy in the last 15 years, other than Joey Votto, who has put up those kind of numbers over a 61-game period. I mean, talk about carrying a ball club. They really ought to travel the guy in some kind of an insulated bubble. Because right now he is a lot more than just a number three hitter in this lineup. There's no doubt. He is the lineup. And I'm not trying to take anything away from any of the other players. I mean, it's a team sport, but he changed, 
He's like when Albert Pujols is hot and at his prime. Joey Votto is the same way. He's a game changer. You know where he is when he's on double deck. You know where he is when he's in the on deck circle. You know when he's coming up. If he's five hitters down the line, if you're the opposing manager, I mean, you manage the game around Joey Votto, or you mismanage it. Well put. Three and two. Meanwhile, to Jay Bruce, 257 batter, 13 home runs, 39 knocked in, and that's fouled out of play. Get a pair in the top of the first inning. The Reds' first three batters reach and wash away the deficit. And there's a lazy pop up behind the back. And that'll be the shortstop for the second out of the inning. This has been a recent trend for the Indians. It was, in fact, up until the least the just completed series before they got here, giving up runs early. And obviously has been a major problem for Tomlin in his three losses this season. What did they pitch over the weekend, however, in St. Louis? I mean, they nearly completely shut down the highest scoring team in the league. Balls in the air, deep center field. Brantley looks up, it's against the wall, and Frazier continues to pile up the extra base hits. That's his 10th double. Well, he, they try to sneak a fastball by him, and you see where that ball just comes up out over the plate, and after a first pitch curveball, Frazier's ready for the heater. Uh, Frazier safe at second safe and secure where we're going brother later tonight New York light nice now Ryan Ludwig 201 batter eight homers 27 batted in looks at a fastball right down the middle of strike Get up on the scoreboard, they'll put up at this date in baseball history. How about the one sitting out there right now? 1952. Think about this for a minute. The Braves' Warren Spahn homered, struck out 18 batters, pitching 15 innings, and lost 3 to 1 to the Cubs. How about that? I wonder how many pitches he threw in that ball game. Is there a way to find that out? Joel, can you look that up? Is that too too long ago? Struck out 18, pitched 15, hit suck a bomb, up, suck up the loss. The only run your team scored is when you went deep, Warren Spahn. And <laughs> oh man, hang with him. Two and one on Ryan Ludwig. Frazier out there at second with two outs and a slow roller to the left side. Cabrera can't find the hand. Ball was hit so slowly. I'm not so sure if Cabrera fields it cleanly with all his momentum coming. Would have had enough on the throw to get Ludwig, who runs pretty well. I really think that was probably the play for the third baseman. I mean, he gives up on it after just two steps right there. Maybe he didn't want to run into the runner, but the runner has to yield to a fielder fielding a batted ball. That ball, if it's going to be made a play at all, Jose Lopez has got to show a little bit of range down there. He didn't do that, and Cabrera really just did about what only thing he could do. It is an infield hit. So now Devin Mesoraco, the eighth red to bat here in what has been a three-run first inning and a chance to add to it. One other note, by the way, on this date in baseball history in 1965, Jim Maloney had a no-hitter for 10 innings. 10 innings until Johnny Lewis hit a home run over the white stripe at Crosley Field, left center field in the 10th inning. 11th. 11th inning. 
That was a kid glove night. I was there. You're kidding me. I remember like it was yesterday. You're kidding me. No, I'm not kidding you. Struck out 18 batters in that game. Yeah. That I wow. didn't know, but I mean. How about that? I, mean, I knew it was a no-no. Wow. How are you, about 20? College student? <laughs> I was 10. Not quite in college yet. That was 65, is that what it was? Yep. Yeah. Yeah, I remember that night. Might not have been a kick glove game. My dad took me down to the ballpark that night. What was your dad's nickname? He had a nickname, the Senator, is that what they called him? Yeah. Yeah. Flowing gray hair, right? Tall, handsome guy. I'm not sure he had gray hair back then, but well, no, not yeah. that. But I mean, as, as he moved forward, but they had, they had a white line painted at Crosley Field as that fence, big fence. They had a, a demarcation line for home run. That ball was a line driver right over that white line. I could not believe it. Boy, I really disliked Johnny Lewis from then on. <laughs> of course, he disappeared from sight shortly thereafter. Talked a lot about that particular game with Jim Maloney during. His times down every spring at the Reds Fantasy Camp. Is that a good year? What a good guy. What a wonderful guy. Yeah. I think he's coming back to town, I hope, for the uh, oh, I, I Hall of Fame gala. Yeah. Swing and a miss. Settle in the inning. Eight men back. Reds score three on one crack of the bat from who else? Joey Votto. Reds lead 3 2 at the end of one. Serious injuries call 1 800 Elk, Ohio. Bad blood between the Reds and the Indians last night. Matt Latos pushes Derek Lowe off the plate. He points into the Reds' dugout. And we learn that there is some history and some rather bitter and ugly history between Derek Lowe and Dusty Baker. Yeah, I wouldn't really say it's Indians Reds, it's more Baker Lowe. And both of them had some. Verbal pot shots to take at each other based on some kind of incident went back to going back to, I don't know, four or five years ago. Both exchanging some rather uh, harsh words with one another following the game. And it should be noted, Derek Lowe, his next start will come against the Reds, and that'll be on Monday in Cleveland. So yeah, stay tuned be, for more to come. Things like this would happen from time to time, and it would kind of stay between the clubhouses. Or stay within Major League Baseball. Word of mouth would spread one team to the another to a friend of his who would you'd call and talk to on the phone. But I mean, 30 seconds after Lowe makes the comment, somebody's over there in Dusty Baker's face. What do you say about that? And 30 seconds after that, all of it is being twittered about uh, on the web, picked up by wire services. I mean, it is all of a sudden explodes in no time. 
lot of times it gets blown out of proportion. Now, if, if anything does happen, if there really is a feud of some kind, now Major League Baseball has some reference to back up to and say, hey, you know, we've got justification for, for fines, for suspensions, and things like this. It kind of takes the fun away of a family feud, don't you think? A little bit. Likely getting Jose Lopez a little pop up to begin the second inning. So now Aaron Cunningham. We've seen Cunningham in recent years with San Diego. Fastball is high for ball one. Well, all of these Indians that have gotten a little bit of playing time out in left field, Cunningham, Shelley Duncan, more recently Johnny Damon, as there's a ground ball to Kozo. A little sloppy on that throw, and Votto saves it. All of them are well aware that Grady Sizemore may not be that far behind from rejoining the team. And you know when Grady Sizemore comes back, that Grady Sizemore will be in the lineup. Michael Brantley's not going anywhere, and neither is Sin. Sue Chu. Now Larson with two out and nobody on. Ball one. For a team that has struggled much like the Reds this year as far as their offense is concerned. A healthy Grady Sizemore would be an enormous lift. To the Indians chances of trying to not only stay in the American League Central but perhaps win it. They're a game and a half behind Chicago going into play today. Of course there was a time where Grady Sizemore was among the best players in all of baseball. Yeah, but you wonder though with all the knee injuries and leg problems that he has had and back problems that have been associated with that, that how much he's going to be able to come back and be the player that he once was. Two out single by Marson and so the pitcher Tomlin will get a chance to bat with two outs one on here in the second inning Reds leading three to two. Real nice crowd again on hand here today. The crowds clearly have picked up during this week. And Leak allows a base hit to Tomlin. So here comes Chu now. All of a sudden there were two out and nobody on. Now there's two on. And two out for a man who homered his first time up. Uh, Tomlin's a pretty good hitter. I mean he was a two position player. Pitcher and position player when he was in junior college. Down in Texas. Pretty good swing right there. I mean, he jumped all over the first pitch. That's exactly what the game plan appears to be. Nothing in one on Chu, Marcin and Tomlin aboard. Two are out in the inning. And a fastball to just missed. But the Reds have been very successful. Right-handed pitchers the Reds have run out there in this series. Cueto and then last night Matt Lote, uh, Latos throwing the two-seam fastball inside against these left-handed hitters. League may have gotten away with one there. That was left out over the middle of the plate. Had a little something on it. You're right, not far from that location where Chu parked one the first time up. So now Leak a strike away and out away from avoiding any damage here in the inning. And there's strike three called. A beauty on the outer edge, and Chu disagrees. Middle of the second, Reds three, and the Indians two.
Miller time will come your way later in today's game brought to you by Miller Lite. But for the time being, be part of the largest ever gathering of Kermit and past Reds at the Hall of Fame induction gala. Sunday, June the 24th, all the current Reds will be there. And over 20 Reds Hall of Famers honoring Sean Casey and Dan Greeson for their induction. For tickets, call 513-765-7921 or visit RedsMuseum.org. It's downtown at the Duke Energy Center. It is an unbelievable night. Well, we know Tomlin's a good hitter. He has a base hit today, and we know Mike Leake is a good hitter. Six out of 20, including a home run. a fly ball in a short right center field and very quickly the first two reds are set down by Tomlin here in the second inning three pitches to get two out Should be brought up. It was uh, made public knowledge before the game today. Chris, you brought it up during the game last night, talking about Scott Rowland. But apparently, he has decided to go out on a rehab assignment for a couple of days tomorrow, Saturday for sure. And if everything goes well, and there are no you know lingering effects from his shoulder injury, that he will be joining the team as early as Sunday in New York, or maybe Monday in Cleveland. Fall in a base hit for Zach Kozart, two for two today, which means Votto gets the bat. Yeah, I always think that's a good thing. I'm talking about rolling, not Votto batting. Votto batting, that's an obvious good thing. But to go out and do a rehab assignment, some players don't want to do that, no matter what. They just think that they're ready right off the shelf. But it's been quite a while for Scott. And it also gives the Reds a chance to delay their decision what they're going to do with the roster, maybe find out how quickly. Uh, Drew Stubbs will be ready because if he's not ready, maybe they'll retroact him to the dis disabled list and a lot of different things that have to fall into place when you activate a guy. It means someone else has to go. Roland went on the disabled list all the way back on the 12th of May, so it's been over a month. Well, he ran it up to a 3-1 count, a little sinking fastball away. To most hitters, that might result in a ground ball. But to Joey Votto having a long drive and a three-run bomb. You know, Votto gives you the idea. If you're standing on the pitcher's mound, you're looking in there, and you're watch, you know, we're watching his eyes here from the center field camera, Watching his concentration. He's got an 0-2 count, but you don't really feel like you really have an 0-2 like you do a lot of other hitters. When you're ahead 0-2, you go for the kill. You don't feel like that with Votto because he doesn't chase pitches like that. You throw him teaser pitches and he spits on them. And he's saying, hey, you got me 0-2, but it will soon be 2-2 unless you make a mistake and I hit a line drive somewhere in the meantime. See him just move up in the box right there. Yeah. Hit the ball right on the nose, but played nicely by Kipnis, so and that'll end the inning. So he hit a man left. We play two Reds lead by a run.
comes to bat here in the top half of the third inning. We've had a home run already today. And of course, uh, every year in Major League Baseball, around this time of year, we have the home run challenge to raise money for prostate cancer research. And the man who started it all, Michael Milken, kind enough to join us. It seems like you've been with us forever during Seven, this week. 17 years. And you notice we have a new feature this a good keep for dad you. in the game. You like this? I do. But that is the theme. 17 years ago, come out to the ballpark. What better place today to be than be in Cincinnati, out during the day, reminding your dad, grandfather, brother, co-worker to get tested for prostate cancer and enjoy the great American pastime. And you are a prostate cancer survivor yourself, and, and I guess that was the impetus, if I'm not mistaken, for you to really start this, or maybe had it in mind even before then. No, it really didn't. I was diagnosed in 93. They gave me 12 to 18 months to live. Uh, so I'm probably the happiest guy in the ballpark today to be here, uh, almost 20 years ago. But I have been funding cancer research for 20 years, knew a lot about breast cancer, melanoma, brain tumors, knew nothing about prostate cancer and that really was the impetus sitting here and trying to figure out how we're going to increase awareness and getting people to know about prostate cancer and a simple test and there's been a lot of discussion about the test should you have the test should you have the test who doesn't want to take a simple blood test for a life-threatening disease and in america today 92 percent of all men live five years and longer who've been diagnosed with prostate cancer. And for 30% of the men, you don't even need any treatment. You've caught it so early. And I know you've been talking about it for low these many years, 17 years now, uh, Mike, uh, the fact that the early detection, it's all the difference in the world between, it is. Uh, between being handed a, a life sentence, if you will, or being able to watch your kids and your grandkids grow up. Well, due to the money we've raised, and we've raised $40 million from home runs that's gone 100% to research, and that's been matched by matching grants 20 to 1, so that's turned into $800 million. And today, even if you've caught it late, there's a lot of treatments today that you might be able to live out a normal life with the new treatments that are available. Michael, what can people do today to get involved and help so, out? Well, you can go to PCF.org, ProstateCancerFoundation.org, learn a lot about nutrition, what are the most current therapies, why the death rate has dropped by 50%, not just early detection, but the new therapies that have come out, and you can pledge money. Everyone, every home run coming into today and in our first 36 ball games, 83 home runs have been hit this wow. year. Last year, we only had 90 home runs for the whole program, which ends on Father's Day. So there's a lot more home runs that have been hit what are you doing? in Juice the last the two weeks. No, we've been sending, you know, love notes to the pitchers. <laughs> you know, in the early years, <laughs> just to send a thank you to the pitchers after it was over. Tell them, we know it was terrible. We know it was terrible what happened out there with that home run, but we want you to at least know something good happened. That's right. After a couple years, Major League Baseball sent us a note, did not think this was a good idea. Did not think so. We don't do that anymore. Well, you know, Michael, uh, we were kidding around earlier that you have to make sure you've got some pull now. I mean, you've got pull inside the, the, the big-time proud power circles in baseball. Father's Day weekend, you ought to be playing here every single year because this is the most homer-friendly ballpark in Major League Baseball. I know you're aware of that already. Well, it, let's just say it's one of them. Colorado yeah. isn't bad. Not that bad. ball travels 9% more. So when you see that home run sign out there at 415 in Colorado, it here, that's equivalent to about a 370, 375. And they what? hit six last night when I was there. What can men do <clears throat> as far as diet goes to ward off prostate cancer in the first place? Well, first, we know a lot more about that subject. Cooked tomatoes, broccoli, cauliflower, Brussels sprouts. There's a lot of discussion here about palm, pomegranates, etc. And today you can actually get a little vitamin pill. It's 100% pomegranates, just in a vitamin pill called Pomex, P-O-M-X. Cutting down on barbecued food is not just prostate cancer. Over a long period of time, the charring of things breaks down your immune system to cancer. And so less charring of food. It has proved to be very successful, cutting down a little bit on red meat, cutting down on dairy. All that's on the site, pcf.org, and there's a lot of things you can do. And if you 
You know, if you have one family member, your probability doubles. So it goes from one in six men to one in three. If you have two, you're getting close to 65 to 70 percent. If you have three, you're over 90 percent. So early detection is good, but you'd rather not get it. And by adjusting your lifestyle, you can accomplish that. And when you compare the United States, where more than 90 percent, 92 percent of all men live five years and longer, to say Europe, and in Northern Europe, UK, for example, it's closer to 50 percent. So we're at 90 percent survival rates. They're at 50. Wow. And that's the difference that testing has brought and better detection and better treatment. And certainly your foundation, uh, Michael, deserves a great deal of credit. You brought it to the forefront all over America. And I know I'm speaking for dads and granddads and sons and nephews and so many of us all across the country. Thanks for your great work. Thank you. And I want to thank Major League Baseball. And the key is the announcers wearing their blue on Father's Day to the whole program. Absolutely. Thank you very Absolutely. much. Happy Father's Day. Thank you. Thank you. Great seeing you one more time. 1-800-798-CURE or PCF.org. Keep Dad in the game. On the third inning with a three to two lead over the Cleveland Indians we thank Michael Milken and all the work that he and all the folks from the foundation are doing prostate cancer research and already a couple of home runs hit in this game and so all the home runs hit between now through play on Father's Day this Sunday we say it all the time you know you can't forget about Mother's Day that is the ultimate sin. But uh, don't forget about Dad either. One and to Brandon. Down the left field line. If it's fair, it is gone. It is fair. It is gone. The franchise had once had him. And traded him to Cincinnati for Jeff Stevens. Has turned into a home run for the Reds organization. Baseman for the first out here in the inning, and the Reds have a 4 2 lead. Well, you know the drill if a Red hits that Toyota side in right center, it's a long ways away. Tanya Lightsey from Batavia, proud owner of a 2012 Highlander, will win the beautiful new Tundra at the ballpark. And why not register for your chance to win by stopping by your Cincinnati and Northern Kentucky Toyota dealer? Oh, 
and two on Todd Frazier. In the air, left center field, playable out there for Cunningham. Two out. Mets, a team the Reds will see tomorrow night, are gunning for the three-game sweep in Tampa over the Rays today. And the Mets are batting in the first inning and already have taken a one-nothing lead. Hit off the end of the bat in a short right field. Chu will run it down, and it's a one-two-three. Third inning following the home run by Brandon Phillips. We move to the fourth. Reds four. Indians two. The NFL's rookie symposium. A second try, this time as a speaker to the first year players around the NFL. I bet that's very interesting. And Al McCoy talks about today's Reds Indians game all on FoxSportsOhio.com right now. Of course, Adam Jones and all the off field problems that he had early in his career. And now perhaps trying to impart some lessons that. Hopefully he has learned to some of the players that are entering the league for the first time. It's a good idea. I would imagine baseball does something like that maybe for players that you know every organization maybe does something like that for players coming into professional baseball. Well, Major League Baseball does overall. Rookie development camp that they have in Washington D.C. every year. George Grant one of the guys that's involved in that quite heavily. He helps those players get to know what it's like to do interviews, how to deal with the press, the media, and what organizations do. They send maybe one or two of their best prospects who they think they are definitely going to be major leaguers a year or two out, and they send them to this camp. And it's in the winter time, and they get they take them to Capitol Hill. They they meet uh, some of the political leaders of the country. They go through all sorts of things to kind of prepare them. So it's a good step. Well, just don't send him there to learn how to manage your money. Strike one to Aaron Cunningham. And it's one on and fouled back out of play. Oh, and two to Cunningham. Leak all of a sudden starting to pile up some of the strikeouts. He did not fan a batter the first time through the rotation. Here we are a second time through. 
And he has fanned four of the six that he has faced. Well, as is so typical, these pitchers have both had problems right from the onset of the ball game, but they seem to now have settled down just a little bit. First three batters reach base against Josh Tomlin after that home run by Votto. First two batters reach base and then came around to score in the first inning against Mike Leak. He's tightened it up a little bit ever since. Time to send out a little birthday greetings to Lisa Latos, mother of Matt Latos, having a birthday today. Lisa, happy birthday! Congratulations on your son's fine outing last night. Happy birthday, indeed. Now, is she in town or is she down in Florida? I do not know. I got a note forwarded to me from Rob Butcher, asked us to pass those greetings along, and we're happy to do it. Swing and a miss. That's five of them here through the last seven. Nice little breaking ball right here. Aaron Cunningham now looking for it. That really never did look like a strike at all. And Cunningham, backup outfielder, just can't hold back on it. Certainly all these guys that have been bit by that flu, uh, flu bug here in the last number of days have caught a big time weather break today. Well, for a guy like Leak, you're using so much energy out there on the mound. And Chris, you've been out there in big league games. The difference between pitching at 93 and maybe 83 here today might keep you around a little long. Yeah, you're right. You're still going to work up a pretty good lather out there because you're working hard. but. You know, it, it can be very miserable here when it's 94 with a high humidity, not much of a breeze blowing today, not much of a breeze, sunny. Great day for fans here at the ball. Well, I love man. these these 12:30 starts, businessmen specials. These are great games to go to, and especially when you're you're blessed with weather like this. Yeah. I mean, there is no humidity. There's not been the entire week. Today would be the the quintessential perfect summer day. It'd be a good one, too. Yeah, that too. In the center field, a two out single. That's the second time that's happened today to Lee. He's allowed a two out hit to the number eight batter, Marson. You know, the, the Indians have done a pretty good job of doing that. Lonnie Chisenhall did it in last night's ball game with two outs in the first game. He did the same thing, Chisholm Hall again against Johnny Cueto, just to keep the inning alive to get that pitcher to the plate. The last time, Josh Tomlin so leaked that he could swing the bat a little bit. Nearly took his cap off of the line drive through the box. So he starts him with a breaking ball in there for strike one. Reds with a 4 2 lead, we're in the top of the fourth inning. Reds trying to make it a three game sweep over the Indians, and that's a foul ball. Indians came into this series only a half game behind the White Sox, and they were coming off a series over St. Louis in St. Louis, where they won two out of three. The only game they lost in that series, they got beat 2 0 when Kyle Lowe shut them out. Justin Masterson turned in a spectacular performance that day, giving up one run in seven innings for the tribe. Still one and two. Oh, 
Got him on a breaking ball. So six strikeouts through the last nine batters for Lee. Middle of the fourth. Reds lead by a pair. Great dishes together with a food service industry for over 30 years. Buyer Cincinnati and Northern Kentucky Toyota dealers visit buyatoyota.com and buy AT&T, the nation's largest 4G network. AT&T rethink possible. Let's quickly take a look at our AT&T trivia question for today. Who has the longest hit streak for the Reds since Pete Rose's 44 gamer back in 1978 came to an end? You're wondering the tie into Pete Rose's hitting streak. That 44 game hitting streak began today in 1978 on June the 14th. Ended, of course, in Atlanta's Fulton County Stadium. Gene Garber retired him in the ninth inning, officially putting a lid on a streak that had captivated America. But as great as Rose was and some of the teams, obviously, he played on during that hitting streak of 1978, America was just mesmerized by Rose's pursuit of a record that Sports Illustrated did a story many, many years ago and trying to put odds using a bookmaker from Las Vegas on sports numbers and what the odds would be of different numbers and different records being broken. The longest odds on any of the streaks that they took a look at was Joe DiMaggio's 56-game hitting streak. Now, the one number that I would think might even be as long, if not longer than that, Chris, would be the all-time wins by a pitcher. What about consecutive no-hitters? You can do two, then you got to throw another one. You're right. That's the one, the reason I say that, that's the one that Pete Rose thinks is unbreakable. He thinks that his might be, I think maybe that Kyle Ripken streak, too. Yeah. Well, when you're dropping the kind of coin they are on ball players nowadays, you really have to have a special individual to want to go out there every day like Ripken did. Walk to Devin Mezzarocco to begin the Reds' fourth inning by Tomlin. That's his first walk of the afternoon. Reds lead 4-2, batting here in the fourth. Well, that is the walk right there. To a number eight hitter that just must infuriate pitching coaches and managers. Now you got Mike Leak a purpose up there other than swinging the bat, unless Dusty, Le Dusty lets him do that. 
What he's done so far is have him bonds and he'll do it again. And on the other side of that, you know, when you got the catcher at first base, if the catcher's your number eight hitter and he gets on, you got the pitcher coming up, why wouldn't you just want to go ahead and just play this as aggressively as you possibly can and try to get that runner at second base? One and one on leak. And he bunks it foul again. Look at Mark Berry, the third base coach, giving the signs to Lee. He's failed twice to put down a bunt. And now they let him swing away, and he finds a hole for a hit. Leak has more than three times the number of hits that he has sacrifices so far this year. Well, they've got the shortstop and second baseman bunched up here in the event of a double play or even in bed of a bunt that shortstop has to be closer to second base and he opens up that hole on the left side leak finds a spot for a base hit. Red's got something brewing that they can really put a big number up here and. Get this crowd that is already kind of alive really going. Well Heisey has a pair of sacrifices the Indians think he might be putting and he is and he stabs at it foul. For a team that is seven games over the 500 mark, the Reds have had some major issues when it comes to fundamental baseball so far this year. Whether it's moving a runner over, failing to execute a bunt, they've had their moments. I'm not saying it happens every day. See if they ask Heisey to bunt again or they're going to let him swing. No sign of a bunt there, a ball and a strike. Two one to Heisey. And that's trying to butt at least it looks like for a base hit. That didn't look like a sacrifice but in any way. Well the giveaway of course is you see that run the batter runner on his way to first base when he's trying to lay it down. Although he stays in there long enough he just drops the angle of bat a little bit too low and gets underneath it. Usually a pretty good butter. This is the kind of inning that started innocently enough for the Indians. Well, they walk the number eight hitter. The pitcher comes up. He can't get a bunt down. He gets a 26 hopper through the infield for a base hit. Now this guy's tried to bunt. He can't get a bunt down. But you still have a chance of blowing the inning over with a base hit here. And he does indeed get a base hit. 
They're going to hold the runner at third, and they are loaded. So really, Josh Tomlin is a victim of the ineptitude of the Reds to be able to get a bun down. He's harder to bunt on than he is to hit. But that is something uh, certainly one would imagine, uh, Chris, as we start to move forward and you're thinking about October baseball and things like that. Reds could certainly use a little fine tuning in that bunting area. Yeah, they work on it, Tom. I, we you and I both come out to the ballpark very early. We watch down there. They these guys work on it every day. It's just not, it's not guaranteed. But you would like to be able to do it when called on. Double play off the bat of Kozo. Now what that does is not only gets a double play, it cuts a run off at the plate, it gets a double play at first, and it provides an open base to put Joey Votto. And I would be stunned right here if Manny Acton decides to let Josh Tomlin actually pitch to Votto. You're right about that. They're going to go in and intentionally walk Votto to get to Brandon Phillips, who homered his last time up. And we brought up earlier, he's always a guy whenever he plays the Indians, he seems to play with a, a major chip on his shoulder. Now, Dusty Baker said to Brandon at the very beginning of the series, says, you know who we're playing, don't you? Brandon gave that little wry smile that he has. He has shown it. Phillips originally drafted by the Expos in the second round back in June of 99. But if you can imagine for Bartolo Colon, for one guy basically, another player to be named later. Here you look at his home run in the third. The Indians got Cliff Lee, Brady Sizemore, and Brandon Phillips. <laughs> Along with a pretty decent player in Lee Stevens. Lee Stevens was yeah. a nice player. Yeah. Basically for one guy in 2002. And then four years later. Eric Wedge. Apparently soured. Then the Indians manager on Brandon Phillips. They did not have a good relationship. The Indians traded him for Jeff Stevens, a right-handed pitcher, on June the 13th. Well, that, that, that was, that was uh, yesterday, going back six years ago. That was the original deal was at the Expos, right? Cleveland, yes. To Cleveland, get it. Yeah. No wonder they moved baseball out of Montreal. You're right. You know, that's good scouting, though, if you're the Indians. I mean, you know, Cliff Lee and those guys, they're household names now. But they were minor league guys then, and there have been a lot of teams that have screwed up those deals. Swung on and fouled back out of play where you're getting three young players. And, you know, nobody's ever heard of any of them, and you're giving up a guy like Bartolo Colon, and you're thinking, golly, day, you know, who are these guys we're getting back for him? You know, usually when a deal is made like that for a veteran established player in exchange for a handful of prospects usually the team that receives the veteran player ends up on top yeah because you know what you're getting but occasionally it turns around to be so lopsided that you scratch your head that's one of them now this is the important pitch for both Brandon Phillips and Josh Tomlin. Two, two, two outs. Brand has got to figure he's going to get a strike right here. If you're the pitcher, you really don't want to go full count. Bases loaded. And it's served in the right field of base hit. One run scores. Here comes Heisey. He will score. Throw in the third. And he's safe there. Phillips delivers again. That is beautiful hitting right there by Brandon Phillips. Boy, you just love to see him do more and more of that. 2-2 two -two count. He probably senses that the catcher's moved way out on the outer part of the plate. 
Looking for a slider. That's a good pitch right there. He just kind of slashed it into right field. Big side of the infield open. Boy, Chu's got a nice arm. That ball's just completely misplayed by Lopez at third base. He's four feet in front of third base when that throw comes in from Chu. He tries to make the tag, and Joey Bottle can slide right by him. Well, now Bruce, and he looks at a first pitch strike. Brandon had three RBIs in the win here last night. And he's knocked in three in his last two at bats here today. Bruce drives the ball into left center field, but that'll be caught. And the inning is over. Red Strand two, but score two. And leads six two at the end of four. the Reds get back home off this upcoming road trip they'll play the Minnesota Twins you stay around after the game there'll be a Q&A with Hall of Fame inductee Sean Casey there'll be a fireworks show as you know featuring a Hall of Fame summer soundtrack thanks to Jeff Wilder automotive family so three and one Reds for tickets or log on to Reds.com today Well, Mike Lee gave up two runs in the first inning, and the Reds have scored six unanswered. Thanks in large part to that man right there, Brandon Phillips. They intentionally walked Votto in front of him in the just completed fourth inning to load the bases, and he made him pay. This one launched into right off the bat of Chu, and he's homered for the second time today. Two with three home runs all year. He has two of them against Mike Lee in three at bats today. Well, that's a chew they've been waiting on, and Chris talked a lot about it in the game yesterday. Club 20 home runs in 09, 20 in 2010. I mean, they thought this guy was a a 2020 player for many years to come. Runs well, good defender, good hitter, good eye at the plate. But last year dealt with so many injuries, and so far this year has shown very little, if any, pop in the back until today. Saw seven times now in his career. Shin Su Chu has hit two or more home runs in a game. And he brings the Indians within three. And that'll fall in a base hit. 
game a long way from being over despite the fact that it seems as though the Reds have dominated this one and really they have since the middle of the first inning. Ryan Price comes out for a quick chat. Where in Cincinnati, USA is Jim Day? Well, stay tuned to Fox Sports Ohio and follow the Reds live host as he visits Cincinnati, USA's attractions and events. Well, the Reds are going to get some action started in their bullpen. Jose Arredondo begins to throw. I think both managers will agree with what you said earlier. This game is a long way from being over. Dusty Baker has seen so many games that can swing back and forth. He put a couple of guys on an error, a hit, base on ball. Somebody smokes one out of here. Manny Acton was saying the same thing upon his arrival to Cincinnati. He said the ballpark makes me nervous. And he's not even pitching. No, and that's why uh, what this Reds pitching staff has done so far this season uh, is that much more extraordinary. You know, we, we've talked regularly about where they are in the division, and you know, you go back to April the 19th. Phillips, there's one, and another poor throw by Cozart. He's had two or three of those already here today. He had enough time. He had cleared himself from the bag to make a nice strong throw. And maybe held on to it a little too long. Well, he threw it sidearm, but a lot of infielders have to throw it sidearm when a guy's coming in the slide right there. You do that so that the guy will slide. Brandon Phillips fed him perfectly. I mean, he made a tremendous play right there, hit him right in the chest with the throw, and just got away from Cozart. So Kimnis awarded second base. He's out there with one out, and here's Santana. We're starting to talk about the Reds, only the New York Yankees. And you got to remember the Yankees right now have ripped off six in a row, 12 of their last 13. They are the only team in the major leagues with a better record than the Reds going back to April the 19th. That's when the Reds were four and eight. Since then, the Reds are 30 and 19. The Yankees are 31 and 19. But you look at the ERA, go back to that same date, and Reds pitching has a 3.39 earn run average. The three teams in front of them in the National League are pitching in very pitcher friendly parks LA, San Francisco, and Washington. How about Matt Kane last night? Perfect game for the yeah. Giants. Congratulations to Matt Kane on that. Of course, it wouldn't be a perfect game without a little bit of controversy. Ball evidently ran down the first baseline. First base umpire called a foul and replays, really slow mo replay show that just couldn't take the first base bag. Maybe congratulations to home plate umpire Ted Barrett, too. Behind the plate for his second perfect game. Good guy, Ted Barrett. He really is. Really pleasant guy. I know you run him down for some tech talks oh, out in Arizona. It's where he makes his home. He's a friend of tech talk. One and two on Santana. We brought up earlier Kipnis can run and likes to run. 15 steals and 16 tries. Still two and two.
I got to wonder how long Dusty Baker is going to stay with Lake. Obviously, he'd love to get him through five and try to get him a win. But the fate of this at bat may have a lot to say about how long Leak stays in this game. Dusty's already pacing around down there. Yeah. You know, a couple of guys in the starting rotation, Mike Leak, Bronson, and Royal, they're tough guys to determine when they've lost it because it can happen so fast to them. They don't really slow up on their velocity. They don't visibly start getting the ball up all that much. All of a sudden, just the inning or the game begins to get away from them. Eighth pitch in the at bat, and he walked it. Well, now, now, now. Dusty Baker is going to come walking up the steps, and that's going to be all for Mike Leak, who cannot survive the fifth inning, given a four run lead. And he began with a home run by Chu, a single by Cabrera, a double play that should have been turned that wasn't. And in the following batter, Santana draws the walk. So here comes Arredondo. Lee cannot win it. You wonder if some of this might have to do with you know, still being a little bit worn down by that flu bug he's been bothered with the last couple of days. Well, this will be our skyline call to the bullpen. We'll be back in a moment. Live presented by Ray St. Clair Roofing on Fox Sports Ohio. We'll come your way tomorrow night from City Field. And I mean, obviously, you know, Dusty Baker didn't want to come get Mike Leak. Leak obviously upset that he's coming out of this game. I'm sure he is. I mean, he's two, two outs from away from a win. He was spotted six runs. It'll be written about it that he can't make a can't hold a lead. You know, I imagine a lot of this has to do with, you know, him coming over that virus or that flu bug, whatever that was, that has gone through the Reds clubhouse. You know you're weakened no matter what. Even though you come back a day later, you're still pitching a major league game. That's pretty strenuous. And he turned double play behind him. It's a whole different story in that inning. What a play by Phillips. And he gets the out at first base. My, oh, my, did he go a ways to get that. I was thinking before the ball game that this is a very enjoyable team to watch. I mean, after all, you got Joey Votto, maybe right now the best player in baseball, certainly in the National League. You got the flashiest defender in baseball in Brandon Phillips. I mean, he covers more ground. Today he's been knocking him in, but usually he knocks him in and saves him. Well, he saved for sure at least one right, right there. there. Then you got the hardest throwing guy on the planet in uh, Aroldis Chapman. Well, the two things that can make a team look uglier than any other area, as you look at the numbers this year on Arredondo, bad defense and a bad bullpen. 
And those happen to be the two me premier strengths of this Reds team. Their defense is day in and day out. Nothing shy of spectacular. Especially when they have Roland down there at third base. And Stubbs in center field. And their bullpen statistically has been the best in the National League virtually the entire season. Well, you play at a ballpark where the ball flies like it does here, you better play good defense. Because you always hear the mantra of these managers. You just can't give them an extra out. Don't give them four outs this inning. They'll capitalize on it. Well, in this ballpark, more than anywhere else. Already Dodo coming in dealing. Three run, Reds lead. Sports Ohio, Jim Day with you up here in the press box. I want to expand on what you guys were talking about last inning. Last night, Matt Kane throwing the first perfect game in Giants history. 14 strikeouts for the guy. 22nd perfect game in Major League history. Got some help along the way. I don't know if you guys saw that Gregor Blanco catch. It was outstanding. But Kane and R.A. Dickey were hurling. Last night, the 14 strikeouts by Kane ties Sandy Koufax for the most strikeouts in a perfect game. And R.A. Dickey with a one-hitter last night. He gave up one run. He did strike out 12 batters. But you want to talk about controversy, Tom and Chris. That one hit, the Mets think, should be changed. They are actually get, trying to get an appeal for Major League Baseball to get that changed so R.A. Dickey has a no-hitter in that game. We'll see how that unfolds. And by the way, the Reds will face the Mets next. They will miss R.A. Dickey. Well, they're going to miss R.A. Dickey, and they're going to miss Johan Santana, who's thrown a no-hitter. You talked about the Giants' first perfect game ever in franchise history. Santana threw the first ever no-hitter in Mets history a couple of weeks ago. Day is over for Josh Tomlin. Indians go to their bullpen and bring in the southpaw Scott Barnes. Barnes only pitching in his fourth game and this one pulled foul. As Frazier leads off the Reds fifth Reds with a 6 3 lead. Rocco, and there's a base hit in the right field by Frazier. His second hit in three at bats today. Are you talking about hitting the ball where it's pitched? Todd Frazier does that in the last couple of pitches. He fouls a ball down the left field line that was way inside. 
So then Barnes goes down and away on him and just kind of flicks the bat out there a la Brandon Phillips and finds a hole in the right field. Good slow motion. Look at that one brought to you by our friends at Performance Honda. Tell you what, Chris, this, uh, you know, th th this young man, Todd Frazier, you know, we talk all the time about when you get your opportunity, what do you do? And I'm not suggesting for a second that one month you can make a determination really good, bad, or indifferent about a player. But, I mean, you're talking about a guy who's been playing every day now for a month, who's hitting 280, who in roughly, what, 27 starts, has seven home runs, 22 runs batted in. He has 10 doubles. There's a drive to center that's going to carry out of here. Are we collecting home run money yet for keep dad in the game? Piling up again. Ludwig knew it, knew it right as this ball came off the bat. He's hit enough of them. He's not going to hot dog it, but he knows he hit that ball well enough to go right out the front door. Did you think he hit it that well? <laughs> I did by his reaction. Well, he did. The, ball, the ball went up so straight up the trajectory of the baseball went almost straight up. Good hang time, too. Mm -hmm. Now Devin Mesoraco getting back to Frazier for a minute Chris uh, you know again I mean you're talking about a guy with 19 extra base hits He's knocked in 22 runs he has not been the starter for a full month batting average at 280 He's got big hits for you too yeah um, you know I'm sure everybody's different but you know, right now, don't you think it would be very unfair for anybody to say that Frazier cannot be considered to be an everyday player, potential kind of guy, based at least on what you've seen for a month? Well, I think the key word you use there was player. Does he have to be the third baseman? If he can bring Scott Rowland back and Rowland's healthy, and he's swinging the bat. There's a missile off the bat of Mesoraco. And he'll cruise into second base, second time he's been on today, and that's his first hit. I would think that they were trying to find a way to keep him in the lineup, but here's Ryan Ludwig getting the ball a little bit better lately. He's got left field covered up. Chris Heisey's hitting the ball better lately. Frazier's hitting the ball better lately. But when your starting third baseman comes back, the guy who started the season as your cleanup hitter comes back off the disabled list and he's ready. What do you do? Sit him on the bench? These are times I'm glad I'm a broadcaster. Don't have to make any decisions like that. Uh, that's most time. Never even get consulted, thank goodness. Chris Negron comes up there. They're going to ask him, it looks like, to put down a button, advance a runner to third. He takes a strike, pulls it bat away. He is batting for Arredondo. What a great job he did. Came in phase two. Batters got them both out. And any hit of the Indians getting back into this game at least for the time being in that fifth snuffed out by Arredondo. A base hit in the center field, the first major league hit for Christopher Negro. Congratulations, young man. Good for him.
Nice young man. We've seen him a couple of years in a row down in spring training, Tom, and he's always seems to be on the traveling squad. Always smiling, always working hard, coming out early to playing. So excited to be up here in the major leagues. Personal player, play infield, outfield for you. Just a nice young man. Well, the Reds have treated uh, Mr. Barnes rather harshly. Single, homer, double, single. And now going back to the top of the order. The Reds have scored in every inning except for the second inning. Got three in the first after Cleveland scored a pair to open the game. One in the third, two in the fourth. Indians got a run in the fifth. The Reds have answered that plus one here in the bottom of the inning. And excuse me, Roller. And they're going to come to the plate. But they had Mezzarocco on a rundown. And then the catcher runs into Mezzarocco. Interference will be awarded the run. Defensive player that doesn't have the baseball. Mazzarocco running, and then he'll sense that ball going. He's going to turn around immediately, and he goes and runs into the catcher. And I'm surprised I don't see Manny Acta coming out of the dugout to argue that because it looked like to me in real time, and then certainly as we see it on a replay, Mazzarocco did the only thing he could do was look for somebody without the ball to run into him. Well, what that tells me is Devin Mazzarocco is one sharp young man. Yeah. I mean, this is the this is something that you really ought to teach in the minor league level. It's a guy nice who play knows the rules. Rocket. Got away, he knows the rules, got away with it without even an argument from the opposing manager. I'll tell you what, that tells you a lot about Devin Mezzarocco, just as far as his head being in the game at all times. Eight times out of ten, that runner will just throw his arms up in the air. He knows he's going to be tagged out and basically gives himself up. Really the way to do it, because most of the te most teams, I mean, it, it varies, but a lot of times you get in a rundown, and there's a guy chasing you. And the guy who's ready to receive the baseball will yell now to the player behind you who's chasing you. And he'll flip the ball over your head to the guy, and then he's going to chase you back the other. As soon as you hear now, you turn around and you run into the guy behind you, and you hope that he's let loose of the baseball. And that's what Mezzarocco did. So it is 9 to 3, and now it's only 2 on Zach Kozai. Maybe you work on that with Luke's team, huh? I tell you, you know, I mean, it's the first time I've ever heard somebody describe it the way you just did. You can mark it down. That's going to happen as we move along down the road. I think we covered that on Tech Talk once years ago. May have to revisit it. Those aren't out of there swinging. Well, I mean, it makes perfect sense. Of course, Obviously, it's been coached that way. I mean, the guy's got to get rid of the ball, right? And he's not waiting for you to turn around and right. bump in him. He can't get out of the way. Of course, Luke is how old? How old uh, he's a little early for that. Yeah, they're, uh, they're, uh, they're about five the years away from actually <laughs> yeah. getting somebody out of the pickle yet. Now would be like, hey, now throw the ball to the first baseman after you get your <laughs> ground ball. Well, now Joey Votto. lead nine to three batting here in the bottom half of the fifth inning team will jump on the big bird and head northeast after the game today and 
will play Friday night, Saturday night, Sunday afternoon at City Field against the Mets, who are playing very good baseball right now. They fell behind Tampa Bay after jumping out to an early lead, and now the Mets have recaptured the lead 4 3 that game in the third. Bido, a three run home run in the first inning. Bounced out to second, hit the ball very hard at Kipnis on a play back up through the middle as second at bat, and was intentionally walked to load him up for Brandon Phillips, who delivered a two run single in the two run fourth inning. Simon cranks it up in the bullpen. Three and one Nevada. He is looking for something to uncoil on right now. And basically just kick in the door in the third game of this series. Strike to say the least. Otto chokes up on that bat a couple of inches against a lot of the left handers. A walk. Second straight at bat, Brandon Phillips has come to the plate with the bases loaded. But don't miss Fox Sports Ohio. Girl Christine tomorrow near Fountain Square. She'll be there for Freaky Friday at high noon. The event will feature a Cody eating contest. Last year's winner put away 15 of them in three minutes. Freaky Friday tomorrow at noon. Fountain Square. So Brandon Phillips with a chance to make it a huge day. Already three runs batted in. And looks at ball one. Thirty seven runs batted in now for Brandon Phillips and most of those have come in about the last three three and a half weeks and more of them don't too far out in front. Interesting things that could happen when Scott Rowland comes back. You know, we've talked about what happens to Todd Frazier. Does that mean Brandon Phillips goes back into the leadoff spot? That's where he began the year when Rowland was batting cleanup. But right now, Phillips is in the midst of by far his most productive stretch of this season. And I'm just talking about the last two days. But really for nearly the last month. And it's getting more productive. He'll drive in his fourth run of the game. And that makes it 10 to 3 reds. See if Jay Bruce can't get in the hit parade. He's the only spot in the lineup without a base hit on the day.
Well, the Indians are just daring. They are just begging Bruce to think about hitting the ball to the left side. Even with the bases loaded, only one defender stands between the second and third base bags. Two and one. It kind of reminds you of the shift that Adam Dunn used to see all the time. And eventually, you know, you do it enough, and teams will do it enough too, that it eventually gets into your head a little bit. Rather than thinking about where the defense is, you try to concentrate on the baseball. A lot easier said than done. Over Bailey in there, pitch running at third base for. Chris Heisey, I don't know if anything happened to Heisey. Or maybe he's not feeling well. I think the only available extra outfielder they have, of course, Negron could do it for you, I guess, in a pinch. And we know that Valdez can do it. Ball three. So you can put Nate Grone at third and move Frazier. And there's a bases loaded walk. And that makes it 11 to 3. And the Reds are still batting here in the fifth inning. And that's going to be all for Mr. Barnes. A rough fifth for him to say the least. Bruce gets credit for his 40th run batted in on that bases loaded walk. And we will have another pitching change. Reds beating up on the tribe today. 11 3. We're back in a moment. Question today. Longest inning streak by a Red since Pete Rose. 44 gamer. Well, that should not be a surprise. Hal Morris nearly won a batting title. Man could hit, couldn't he? Hey, still in the game. Baseball saw Hal over during the spring training. He's now working for the Los Angeles Angels of Anaheim. I think he's the director of pro scouting for them, if I'm not mistaken. Doing a good job. He bounced around a little bit as a scout. Worked for the Pirates for a couple of years. Then the Red Sox, I think, last year before he got a job with the Angels. Good man. Boy, could he, he was a little busy in the batter's box, yep. wasn't he? Walking all back and forth in the box. Usually stepping back and forth right before a line drive somewhere. Ishmael Rogers just came over to trade prior to last night's game. On the Colorado Rockies. 
Pitched a perfect inning with a couple of strikeouts in his Cleveland debut. He walks in with the bases loaded. And Todd Frazier is swinging a miss. Frazier started this inning with a single in the right field and scored the first of what has been a five run fifth. up foul ground and Santana tries to go into the stands he does go into the stands Lotto tagging up to try and come in and score and we don't know if Santana ever caught the ball no he may have beer and popcorn though wow that's quite a collision down there he just tumbled right over top of the big fellow there. Yeah. Landed on a soft spot. That was Chris Welsh said that. <laughs> That's a big man down there now. Look at it. Again, that was Chris Welsh. <laughs> Who's going out of town very <laughs> shortly. <laughs> Crowded foul. Look at the size of that dude. Man. Two and two on Frazier. Base is loaded. One out. Struck him out. Chased a bad ball away. He hit a two-run home run to straightaway center to start the scoring in his five-run inning. Try to push their record and with an eight run lead here in the fifth inning, though not over. Things looking mighty good to getting to eight games over the 500 mark. I'm not mistaken, that is the best they have been all season long at eight games over. They were 30 and 22 when they beat the Houston Astros in the second game of that three game series. The first two days of this month. We're talking about a club that was four and eight going back to April the 18th. Well, they were clubbed 11 to one by the Cardinals. There's a home run earlier in this inning by Ludwig, and for him, that's nine of them. And now 29 batted in despite the very low batting average. Well, he had a good hitter's count, three and one. Oh, well, he had a good rip and fouled it back.
Well, it was a lengthy top half of the fifth. Reds had to pull Mike Leak, bring in Jose Arredondo. Indians have used two pitchers here in the bottom of the inning. 45 pitches have been thrown total in this fifth inning. 3 2 delivery. Straight up. Kipnis called up by Chu. A five run fifth. Reds 11, Indians 3. Eleven to three Reds in control of this ball game. They've got 15 hits on the afternoon. Dusty Baker will go to his bullpen and bring in the third pitcher of the day. It'll be Alfredo Simon. 16th time for this big tall right-hander that the Reds picked up in Baltimore right at the end of spring training. And staying in the ball game after getting his first major league hit and going to center field will be Chris Negron. Simon has thrown the ball so well for the Reds since they picked him up. You always wonder what you're getting when you're picking a guy up after another organization turns him loose at the very end of spring training. A guy who at one time served as the closer for the Baltimore Orioles. You know, a lot of times, Tom, it's it's how a, a scouting department has organized all the reports on players, so that when a guy pops up on the radar on the waiver wire, you can act fairly quickly on that. And one of the ways that a lot of teams do it, I'm not sure how the Reds do it nowadays. I know that they've updated their scouting software tremendously in the last few years so that it's you can query it much easier. It gives you much more information and it integrates a lot of different reports that different scouts see from players all over the place, both amateur and, and pro. But one of the simplest ways, is, you know, is when a scout turns in a report, he turns in all the details, you know, the arm slot, the power pitches, what his out pitch is, how hard he throws, is he good with runners on, does he feel his position, all those types of things. But the bottom line is acquire or not. And so if you query your little database and say, you just want, I want all the pitchers that are available that would say acquire are out there. You know, this is a guy that was probably on that list and became available, and he has thrown the ball well. I mean, he's thrown the ball up around 95, 96 miles an hour. Has a pretty good idea of a breaking ball. Hasn't been overworked. He's in much better shape than when the Reds acquired him. Mm -hmm. You're talking about physical shape. Yeah. Yeah. His job is to come into this one and throw strikes. And he'll take care of Cunningham to open up the Cleveland six inning. 
It almost makes you wonder, Chris, and, and right now, uh, the Reds are obviously hoping to have Bill Bray back much sooner rather than later. He's already out on a rehab. He'll pitch again tonight and tomorrow night for Louisville after pitching a couple of games for Dayton. Nick Massett, you heard from Walt Jockety. You know, he's more than likely at least to, you know, three, four weeks out, a month. Say, you know, maybe after the All-Star break. So you don't know if the opportunity will be there for Alfredo Simon, but certainly for a lot of other organizations and maybe where their bullpen would be, Simon would be moving up that ladder a little bit. Well, what you like about the bullpen right now is that if the Reds needed, say you had an injury or a sickness, like they did this weekend, but you didn't have an off day where you could flip flop pitchers. They would have been looking for an emergency starter. You've got two guys down there that have started in the past and J.J. Hoover and Alfredo Simon. Simon had what 15 or 16 starts last year for the Orioles. Sam LeCure could be also a guy down there. So you've got a lot of versatility in your bullpen. That's off the leg of Simon, and that'll be an infield hit for Lou Marson, a three-hit day for him. Well, if you're hitting the road, takes Fox Sports Ohio's coverage of the Reds with you by subscribing to MLB.tv. Baseball everywhere. Now Simon will work out of the stretch for the first time and we will have the pitcher Rogers come to the plate and bat. We'll try to get some innings out of this young man and not tear up that bullpen. Jeez. And Rogers, boy, he whacks one hard in the left field for a base hit. I mean, he kind of settled in the batter's box like he knew what he was doing. May have been there before. Have to look up. Maybe he was a position player one time. Down by eight. He's not taking. He's hacking. Well, it's already been a two home run game for the man who settles in now, Shin Su Chu. Pitch by pitch. This time we're going to take a look at a couple of the swings that Shin Su Chu put on Mike Leak. Both of them you see same location, just about same result. The first one in the first inning a little higher. That was about thigh high. And this one he goes down to get the knee high one in the second at bat. And that is our Mazda pitch by pitch. Home run balls to the Indians right fielder. Good player. Yeah, he's got intensity. He's got a great arm. He should have a put out of third base on a good throw from right field. Nice player. Hold down the right field line. Foul. The Indians tried to lock up Chu on a long term contract. About a year and a half ago, he looked at strike three. And he turned it down. And that could turn out to be a very poor decision made by Chu. Of course, that could all get turned around if he starts lighting it up like he has today. I got like a backup slider. It's a slider that goes the opposite way of the way you intended it to go. Pitchers, most of them don't really know when that thing's going to move like that. So 
So now Simon trying to take care of Asdrubal Cabrera. Keep the Indians off the board. There's a pitch and misses off the inside corner. 2 0 on Cabrera. Who has two hits today? Well, Reds fans, if you're in the restaurant industry, let JTM Food Group help you with great tasting, healthier products for your menu. JTM. Three and oh, now to Cabrera. Well, you can understand if maybe Simon is a little bit rusty. I mean, he has virtually been an invisible man working out of that Reds bullpen. Then there a strike. I mean, you go back to the 11th of May. It's over a month ago. He has only pitched in five games. He's pitched in one game in June. And today's the 14th of the month. There's ball four. Well, you're not making excuses for the guy, but Chris, you know, when, when you get into to five games in a month, I mean, command for a guy who has struggled with command during his career at times already, that can't be an easy thing to try and make sure you're right on it. Well, you know, you you think you get some bullpen work down there, but the problem with that is, is that if you're the long man like Simon, you can't afford to go down there before the ball game and get a, a bullpen session in because you may get called on in the second inning to come into ball game. Or you may get called in the 15th inning in an extra inning game. So it's tough to get even regular bullpen work. So what you do is you end up playing a lot of flat ground work before the game and batting practice. And that is not the same at all as, as facing hitters. You know, I think the key, and Brian Price is right on when he does this with pitchers, that every pitcher has his own little key to kind of keep himself together. Same with a hitter. It's like a checkpoint. And once you get to that checkpoint, you can go ahead and get into the flow. I mean, Brian Price may just be out there to kind of remind him of that. I mean, the, the last thing you want your pitching coach to run out there and tell you after you've loaded the bases is, come on out, throw strikes. You want you him to say, give you something instructive to work on. Keep your shoulder closed. Step towards the hitter. Keep your head still. Whatever his particular key might be. 1-0 and oh on Kipnis. And there's strike. Giving us their team leader with 10 home runs. He runs into one right here, and the Indians are going to feel like they're back in his game. Pulled foul, and it's 0 and 2. 1 and 2. Day to be a concession air. It's hard work, boy. Those guys work hard for the every nickel they make. You're right about that. Going up and down steps, oftentimes carrying those. Whatever it is you're, you're trying to sell, whether it's water or beer or ice you, cream. What you like to sell if you're a concessionaire out here at the ballpark? Well, beer. That's where the money is. Now, obviously, there's some money in that right there, too. Yeah. Actually, you should give the cotton candy away and sell the wet wipes. That's a great idea. So you're always thinking up here. <laughs> You should have pitched that to Michael Milken. 
That's a guy that's got the glue to, to maybe back up some of your ideas. That would be a pretty good idea there. I may have to run that by uh, the powers of B, see what they think. Beautiful breaking ball has Kipnis way out in front. Couple of hits, three left, Reds lead 11-3. Greatest stars battle for home field advantage in the fall classic. The road to the World Series begins with a Major League Baseball All Star game. It's Tuesday, July the 10th from Kansas City, 7 30 Eastern Time on Fox. Well, you take a look at this Reds team, and you know, right now, Chris, I think you'd have to say we know Votto. Right now, he's a leading vote getter. Brandon Phillips right on the heels of Dan Uglip. But with this recent surge by Phillips here over the last week or so, as far as some of his numbers, a real strong chance to be there. Yeah. A role as Chapman, mm -hmm. Johnny Cueto. Those would be probably your top four picks, not in any particular order, although Votto overwhelmingly would be number one. But all those guys you mentioned, very deserving. Chisholm Hall now at third. Lopez now at second base. And still Rogers out there on the mound. And Mezzarocco first pitch swing. A tapper down to third. One out. Alfredo Simon will bat. First time Alfredo has hit this season. He's got one leg going to New Richmond.
Actually, that thing might be head to Westchester the way he's going. He might spit all the way out of there. In fact, this is the first time in his major league career that Simon has been in the batter's box. Gonna need a longer bat. Second strikeout for Rogers. Hey, Simon's a good guy. I mean, a lot of times you don't get to know some of the middle relievers. They you know, relievers kind of tend to hang out together, but you know, had a chance to do a number of uh, CBTS tech talks with Alfredo Simon. Very articulate, knows what he's doing. I think it was a really a, a great pickup by the Reds. You may ought to watch some of those tech talks we do on hitting. So in the next three years, when he gets his next appearance at the plate, he'll be ready. Well, he was getting the business from some of his teammates there. <laughs> Got that swing. Now, Kozai. We've not heard anything about Chris Heisey. Don't know if they just wanted to get him a, a little breather or... You know, he's been playing every inning of every game ever since Drew Stubbs went down. Stubbs has never been placed on the disabled list. It has been a week and a half nearly where the Reds have been playing one player short. You know, Heisey, one of those guys who had a, a slight touch of the flu bug. His it wasn't bad enough to to take him out of the lineup. It did sideline Cozart and move Mike Leak start back a day. Bido had a little bit of it as well, but obviously he's been in the lineup. But who knows? That's the kind of thing that you know may not be bad one day, but it can be really bad a few hours later. Two to Kozar. Last couple of nights have been very quick games. We'd be nearly over by now. And yet we're only in the bottom half of the sixth inning and the Reds 11 runs and 15 base hits. Slow roll to short. Do or die play. Tried to pick it up barehanded, did Cabrera, and that'll be an infield hit for Cozart. Boy, one of those games where just about everything is going the Reds' way. They've grown advancing on to third base, so now another RBI opportunity for Joey Votto. Has a three-run home run, a ground out to second, and has been walked twice since. Marson will allow Negron to come in and score. And that'll make it a 12 to 3 game. That'll be a wild pitch. It's not every way you can score, but the Reds have scored in some ways that you don't see every day. Bases loaded walk. Basically, uh, 
defensive interference. Mm -hmm. Catcher is charged with an error on the play. That's the oddball one there. Yep. And now a, a wild pitch. Line drive caught by Chisenhall, and that will end the inning. Reds have scored in every inning except the second and lead 12 to 3. Cincinnati Children's in the top 10 for all selected pediatric specialties in U.S. News and World Report. And by the dependable, long-lasting Chevy Silverado and your tri-state Chevy dealers. Day is over for Joey Votto. Reds with a 12-3 lead as we are set to begin the seventh inning. A lot of the youngsters enjoying the action here today. We're glad they're here. Fredo Simon begins his second inning of work. Miguel Cairo replaces Votto. And he'll bat in the number three position. Simon's going to get at least two, if not three, or maybe even four innings of work today. Depending on what his pitch count is. Through 27 of them in the sixth inning. He has another one of those. It'll be a two-inning stint. Breaking ball misses. Two and one to Santana. Simon is such a big guy. But boy, that delivery is so smooth and easy. When that ball comes out of his hands at 96, 97 miles an hour, it doesn't even look like there is any stress or strain involved to it at all. He really does use his legs right, stays back on the rubber nicely. Well, he threw up a breaking ball at 74, and it's lofted into right center field, a base hit by Santana. Those Fox Sports Ohio girls, you were with them on opening day. We have not seen them here at the ballpark since. They were there for the the parade, and that was about it. That went into left center field. Nate Grone remains in the game to play center out there. Throw goes into second base, and it's a single, and now a double. And Michael Brantley has the longest hitting streak in Major League Baseball this year. 21 consecutive games with that base hit. Well, he's got a nice stroke. We saw him hit a ball last night, line drive between third base and shortstop. Just kind of hitting it very late right out of the catcher's mid. He does the same thing here. He just really waits a long time before he finally slashes that ball to left center field.
Swing and a foul ball out of play by Jose Lopez. Started the game at third, has since moved over to first. Ball and two strikes on Lopez. And now timeout call. That's a nice breaking ball when he's locating that thing to go along with that gas. You know, to everybody in this ballpark, maybe except Alfredo Simon. This is a mop up game. The Reds are up big. They're up by nine right now. You're thinking, oh, well, let's just sit back and watch some baseball. But if you're Simon, you know, you've got your own personal statistics to worry about out there. You want to strand those runners. You want to see a play made behind you. Maybe that'll save a run. You need a strikeout here. You're pitching this ball game like it's a one run game, not a nine run game. One and two to count. Right back with that gas. Oftentimes you see relievers with, you know, really bloated ERAs because they get in games like this, like some of the, the Cleveland relievers that have come in here and just have sucked up a whole bunch of earned runs and just trying to get some innings put in. One and two on Lopez. And a breaking ball stayed up and in. And Simon has to work on all his stuff. We mentioned only five games he's pitched in a month. So, I mean, he can't come in even with it being a nine run lead and just throw fastball after fastball. You're right. Phillips to his left. Oh, my goodness. Wow. Look where he is. He's in medium depth right field. You know, those that have watched baseball and scouted baseball try to figure out a way to quantify defense. The last few years, they made some advances on it, zone rating, and all sorts of other things like that. But there's just no way, really, to put your finger on it until you see a guy like, well, a guy like, I should say, Brandon Phillips right. play second base and see how many base hits he takes away. Guy. Well, two runs are going to score on the ground balls to Phillips to make it a 12 to 5 ball game. But there are two outs with nobody on. So for a guy like Simon, you know, Chris, you were just alluding to, you know, your, your ERA and what can happen. Well, take a look what's happened right here. Simon came into this game with an earned run average at 1.5. By the Indians scoring two runs here in his second inning of work, that has jumped almost three quarters of a run. Did you figure that out? No, come on. You've been around me longer than that. I need fingers and toes and... I mean, every device known to man to well, get you, there. You did Come promise on. never to do math in public. I was and I didn't. Me. Somebody else did. Oh, okay. It's out there on the board. I got you. 2.22. Come on. But the point well taken. It doesn't take very much if you don't have a lot of innings in you to, to jump that earned run average up. Ball at 96 misses inside. Marsons had a very nice day. Three hits and three at bats.
A lot of the folks that were here, at least some of them, have made their way out of here, but a big crowd for this Thursday afternoon game. Rolling down the river. And the Reds trying to roll through the Indians. Three in a row during this interleague series. In fact, the Reds and the Mets will be the only two teams in baseball not playing interleague series over the weekend. Today, flag day. Hope everybody that uh, had a chance to put one out in front was able to do so today. And there's strike three call to end the end. A couple of runs. To make it a 12 to 5 Reds lead, and we're going to keep it right here for the singing and the playing of God Bless America. Kindly remove your hats and face the American flag. Major League Baseball, the Indians and the Reds salute the men and women of our armed forces, as well as those who serve to protect in our local police and fire departments. At this time, please help us honor these brave men and women and all our veterans of service and in dedication to the United States Army's 237th birthday. Please welcome the 100th U.S. Army Band from Fort Knox as they lead us in the singing of God Bless America.
Ball camps are set to get started, presented by Safeco Insurance. All campers get their own Reds uniform, special instruction from a Reds coach. You'll come on the field, a VIP experience, and a guest appearance by a current Red star. For more information on the official Reds camps, visit reds.com slash camps today. Changes continue as Shelly Duncan takes over in left field. And Jeremy Accardo replaces Rogers on the mound. Former closer for the Toronto Blue Jays back in 2007. Accardo, 35 saves. Now a middle reliever here with the Indians. Kind of reinventing himself. Accardo used to be a hard thrower. Now he's throwing a lot more splitters and off-speed stuff to try to make up for whatever loss of velocity he's had over the years. Product of Illinois State University. Rogers goes an inning and two thirds, allows one hit, two strikeouts, and an unearned run. Who's knocked in three runs in each of the last two days? Home run in the third inning, two runs single in the fourth, singled again in the fifth. Phillips had three hits, was on base four times, and the three RBIs with two scored last night. for Phillips are really starting to come around to where you're used to seeing a B for Brandon Phillips. There's a check swing and he's out of there. On the appeal down to the first base umpire Alan Porter. You know to give me an idea it was a month ago. Brandon Phillips had nine RBIs a month ago. Mm -hmm. And now all of a sudden after the three RBIs today he has 37 runs batted in. Well, he's had 16 runs batted in over his last 16 games coming into today. So despite the fact and the calls for people who are saying, well, he's not your prototypical number four hitter, and he might not be, but he's still getting the job done. This guy could use a knock right here when you when you're on the ball club you look up you see 16 hits. This is the kind of day where batters can fatten their batting averages and you're looking at a horse collar right now 0 for 3. You're dying to get a base hit. Jay did get his 40th run batted in this season by picking up a bases loaded walk in that five run fifth. But 0 for 3 a pop to short a ground ball to first. And it's flying out to left. And that is a shortstop who throws out Bruce. Coming up right after the game, Fox Sports Ohio and Chris Welsh will break it down. Reds Live brought to you by Kings Honda and the Kings Auto Mall. Visit KingsHondaUSA.com. And of course, Reds Live, the pregame show version. We'll have the checklist back in full force Friday and Sunday. 
taking a temporary leave of absence, but I have a feeling we'll get the checklist re-leading right up to game time over the weekend in the Big Apple. They have had a lot of buddies of mine and then uh, that have asked me, I'm being totally serious about this. Because they tell me that, and I've told you this, and you know I'm being sincere when I say it. I think you have a little bit more time than we generally have when we start the games, and you have a game like today where we come on and literally have, you know, 45 seconds to sort of hang your hat on something to get ready to watch for in the game. And in the checklist, you know, you've got three, four, five minutes there to really break it down and and lay out a few items that could be a factor leading up to the first pitch. Three, four, five minutes is a long time. I would call that overexposed. <laughs> Full foul. Well, we'll see what uh, Kent Dream Weaver has in store. He's a producer of the pregame show. Does a great job. He certainly does. Jeff Coral will be on the road with us handling the pre and post game duties. Chew back to the track and he brings it home and that will retire the side. First inning since the second inning. The Reds have not scored. American ballpark. June the 24th, the next Sunday, the Reds will be here. Meyer family deal. Check it out. When one member of the family buys a full price ticket, they then have the option to buy three additional tickets at half price. And on that date, the 24th, first eight that 8,000 kids, 14 and younger, get a Joey Votto batting glove. Thanks to Time Warner. Boy, those will be a hot item. Three eight one Reds, a number to dial for tickets. Room is out. And now on the pitch taking over for Alfredo Simon is another infrequently used member of the Reds bullpen. That's right hander J.J. Hoover. Well when your starting rotation gives you a good solid effort for six innings maybe seven innings like the Reds have the last couple of times through the rotation your long guys don't get much work. So we've seen Alfredo Simon today. We've seen now J.J. Hoover. Jose Arredondo came in to get Mike Leak out of that inning in the fifth. Those are big outs in that fifth inning. Yeah, they were. And, and in retrospect, I'm sure that Dusty Baker thinks, man, oh, man, I wish Leak had gotten through that inning. He would have been able to qualify for a win because he pitched some good games earlier in the year where he did not get anything out of it as far as decisions. But came so close this afternoon, but 
at that time you don't know that the Reds are going to put up 12 runs. Shelly Duncan bats for the first time today. Of course, he is a son of longtime Major League pitching coach, former Major League catcher Dave Duncan, who still is on a leave of absence from the Cardinals organization. His wife has been in a tough battle with cancer, saw her over the weekend in St. Louis. She seems to be doing better. Dave Duncan and Tony LaRusso were both in St. Louis over the weekend when the Indians were there. In the air right center Bruce will wave off Negro one away. Talking about how Simon was pitching only for the fifth time in a month. It hadn't been much more frequency for J.J. Hooper. Juice spun out of the way on that fastball at 94 high and tight. Chew already a couple of home runs in a game today. With 93 on the outside corner. Hoover has been with the ball club since they brought him up from the minor leagues on the 24th of April. So outside of about the first three weeks, he has been a member of what has been an outstanding bullpen. Now those three weeks, of course, were his first three weeks in the Reds organization, having been acquired at the very end of spring training in exchange for Juan Francisco from the Braves. And boy, when we went through Atlanta and talked to the coaches and players out there of the Braves, they're just so high on this young man. Of course, the Braves were very flush with a lot of young, talented pitching in the minor leagues, so the Reds had a, I don't know whether they had a choice or not, but they did their scouting when they looked at hit J.J. Hoover. Good delivery. He's got the kind of fastball that really explodes on you. He uses his legs extremely well. You heard the crowd roaring in the background. If I'm not mistaken, this is the first time this year they have a you know a deal every time you buy a ticket to the game that if Reds pitchers strike out 11 or more batters in a game. Only here at home. You take your ticket and you get a free pizza and you get free ice cream. Where? That I couldn't tell you. Well, that's why you heard the big roar of the crowd and they put it up on the scoreboard out in left center field. So not only do the folks that hung around uh, or the, those that bought a ticket, maybe they're long gone. Get to enjoy watching perhaps a Reds win leading 12 5 here in the eighth inning. We talked about what a great crowd Thursday afternoon 34,193. That is by far the biggest crowd of this series, and there have been good crowds in this series. Yeah, there have been. 29,000. Look, you'd love to sell out every single game. I think that this is a number. The 34,000 is where the Reds is out with a shot in the right field off the bat of Cabrera. 
And this will be a two out double. I think somewhere around this neighborhood, Chris, is where the Reds would really like to get to a point of where they can draw night in and night out. You know, you have bigger crowds perhaps on the weekend, but now that summer's in full gear, I think this is where they'd really like to be mm -hmm. and feel like they can get there. And winning baseball games will go a long way towards that. Yeah, they really will. The Reds have had a lot of pretty good teams in here to watch. But there's no substitute for putting a winning product on the field, your hometown team. And people are talking about the Reds more. I mean, you're probably being stopped on the street more. Probably on the highway more. Talking about the Reds. Why do you got to go there? You always got to take it in the toilet. I think there's more talk about the Reds nowadays. On the highway. <laughs> Unbelievable. <laughs> Tell you what, though, our boy Kyle, Kyle Bush last night. Yeah, boy, how about that? He needed a little help in North Carolina. Yeah, we didn't know what he was talking about. And then Joel Luck up here, our statistician in the booth each and every game at the ballpark. You know, you and I were looking at each other like, we don't know what that means. When he said, hey, hey can you give me a little help in North Carolina? And apparently the old boy was test driving out a new car and was doing 128 in a 45 zone. <laughs> took away his license. Do you need a driver? Do you need a valid driver's license to be an NASCAR? Apparently driver? not. One and two to count on Lonnie Chisinau. Popped up, shallow right. Bruce is there, inning over. Good work by Hoover. He allows a hit. A man stranded. Reds coming to bat last in the eighth, leading 12 to five. Dog play of the game. Take a look at Mesa Rocco. Alert, aware. Is in a run down and appeared to just make contact with a catcher. That's an error on the catcher. Pretty and good Mesa Rocco was given a play too. A very astute play. That really is. You know, there are a lot of guys play a lot of sports, Chris, who just don't know the rules of the game, and that's not an indictment. It happens all the time. Yeah. There are a lot of coaches and managers that don't know all of the rules of the game. Well, clearly, Mesoraco knew that one. Ludwig tags one into left field. This will be up against a wall. And Ryan on his way to second base with a double to begin the Reds' eighth inning for Ludwig, his third hit of the day.
Well, I would imagine that right now, even though he only got two outs in the game, and Ari Dodo would be the guy that probably would pick up a win in this game. He came in when it was six to three, and he came in with two on in the tying run at the plate. The retired the only two batters that he faced. That's up to the. Um, yeah, there are circumstances where the official score can award the win yeah. to somebody who doesn't happen to pitch in that fifth inning. So he came in and got two thirds of an inning. I don't know whether they'll end up giving him the win or not. Simon pitched two. Of course, he gave up a couple of runs in the seventh inning. Yeah, that's why I'm thinking, you know, already Dondo probably got the two biggest outs. Or Cleveland was still in this game. Either way, it's a what his bullpen or friends down there would call a vulture win. Mm -hmm. But they count. Sure they do. They don't call him a vulture win when you're looking at the National League Central Division standings. But with a win today, the Reds go to 35 and 27. Got a good ring to it. Pirates will play later tonight in Baltimore. Pittsburgh since moving into a tie with the Reds atop the NL Central have lost two straight against the Orioles while the Reds have won two in a row. Try to make it three straight here with three more outs to play. Cardinals will play later tonight wrapping up their series against the White Sox. Over the weekend the Pirates will play these Indians in Cleveland. And the Cardinals will stay at home and They'll play the Kansas City Royals. That Milwaukee team was starting to make a little bit of noise. And then all of a sudden here in interleague play have lost back to back games against Kansas City. And they'll wrap up their series tonight. Talked about the Reds missing Johan Santana along with R.A. Dickey over the weekend. They'll see Gee. Jonathan Neese, he's a native Ohioan. Just signed to a long-term deal. Good look at pitcher. That'll be on Fox Saturday night, don't forget. And then Chris Young back after missing nearly a full year. Pitches so far in this and back to Mezzarocco with a ninth coming up. Zarocco gone on strikes. First out here in the bottom of the eighth. Negron today has his first major league hit. He scored his first major league run. Why not cap it off with your first big league RBI? A runner out there at second base with one out at strike one. Ball of two strikes. Yeah. 
Wilson Valdez stands in the on deck circle with bat for J.J. Hoover. Wow, 2 2 fastball right down the can, and the groan takes strike three. Goes in inning, allows a hit with a strikeout, no runs. Ball does a big part of the opening game winning this series. He's got a start, had three hits, scored a run, knocked in a run. 0 for 3 last night in a second straight start, but did walk and score. Come on and pitch for the Reds in the ninth. Like Legos, Tom. I know you've been to Lego Land. I like Lego Land. I want to tell you that there's a local Lego Land going on. I was out there yesterday at Camp Ernst Middle School in Burlington, Kentucky, doing a little ribbon cutting of their Lego weekend. And uh, start today from three to eight, Friday and Saturday. Now they've got a huge Lego set. I mean, huge Lego setup. Great thing for kids. So before you head home to watch the Reds game on TV. Each of the next couple of days, you can head on over there and take your kids. They've got games and all sorts of contests and things like that, and all for the benefit of their Lego team. So, hope they have a great weekend out there. Yeah. Gone swinging Valdez, and we're on our way to the ninth. Reds 12 and the Indians 5. Miller time brought to you by Miller Lite. Ryan Ludwig, a two-run home run to start a five-run fifth inning. And the Reds lead 12 to 5 as the Indians bat in the ninth, three outs away from a three-game sweep.
Sam LeCure will try and finish off the Indians before the Reds hit the road to New York. Well, Ryan Hannigan's had the entire day off, and now he'll come in to catch LeCure here in the ninth inning. Another guy, Tommy, we talked about, same with Alfredo Simon and J.J. Hoover, only 16 games for Sam LeCure. But, you know, for a guy that did not look all that good in spring training, when the, the bell rang and the real season began, I mean, he has just been lights out. Controlling that fastball, throwing that little two-seamer right inside on left-handers. Got great comeback action on it, big overhand curveball. You watch Carlos Santana in the plate, and one of the things that the Indians would really like to see him do is simplify his batting style. His front side, he's got that toe kind of tucked in, he takes a big high leg kick, and so often he doesn't get his foot down in time to make a good swing on the baseball. And he was the guy that, when I was speaking with their manager, Manny Acta, the other day, and he was saying, I'm telling some of my guys to watch Joey Votto. And he was mainly talking about Santana. Had great success in the minor leagues, hitting like he does now. But he's finding that pitchers have found his holes. And they've begun to exploit him a little bit. The groan called off by an alumnus. One out in the night. Well, Chris, you have to say about this ball club. You know, I asked you at the time, and you didn't think it'd be a big deal. But the Tigers came rolling into town here on, you know, Friday night. You beat them after losing two out of three to your division rivals and Pirates to begin this homestand. You gave Verlander all he wanted and more. Mm -hmm. 125 pitches in six innings got him out of the game, but Detroit rallied late to win by a run. And then after opening up a 6-2 lead in the seventh inning. One of the few times this year the Reds bullpen let the team down and the Tigers came away with a devastating come from behind win or so you thought. But after a Monday off day. The team has come back and. Broke out for seven runs in the series opener. They got five runs here last night a season high 12 on 17 hits today. You needed a sweep just to have a winning homestand after losing the first two series, and it appears that's what's going to happen. Well, you look at the games inside those series, though, that, you know, they could have, with a couple of different breaks, gone either way. That could have been a, a red sweep of the Tigers yep. with just a couple of little things going in the Reds' way. One of which, obviously, a little better performance out of the bullpen. Those two games that they lost to the Pirates, well played, just tight ball games that the Pirates just ended up on top. very little doubt as you look all around Major League Baseball that every race is going to be tight. Here you have a year where for the first time a second wild card team will enter the postseason. And every division with the exception of the National League East separated by three and a half games or fewer. It's hard to believe in that NL East. The Washington Nationals just continue to roll every night. They have won six in a row, while the Braves have lost four in a row. The Mets have won their last two. But the Braves and the Mets are a full five games behind Davey Johnson's team in that division.
Rian two to Johnny Damon. Playable from Cairo. Two out. Well, the Reds would like to think they could have a, a three-game lead by night's end over their closest pursuer in the National League Central. Told you the Pirates play in Baltimore to wrap up that series later tonight. And the Cardinals, who are three back, will play the rubber game of their three-game set against the Chicago White Sox. Now, this is the guy the Reds have been looking for all day long. Out number 27. Final. We'll be back to wrap it up in a moment. <laughs> 